You think you're listening to your speakers, but you're not. You're listening to your room. And if you've got your speakers like a foot from a wall, and then you're two feet from the wall with your speakers two or three feet on either side at sharp angles coming in like this, so you get this really dramatic feeling listening to the music. But there are problems with that. And the biggest problem is that you can't actually hear the truth of your mix. Welcome to Kush After Hours. My name is Gregory Scott. Tonight, I'm going to turn the tables. I'm going to come into your studio in my mind. And here's the thing. I don't think I'm going to like what I see. So you may have noticed by now on this show that the focus here is on hearing. Right? It's not on technique or gear. We're going to touch on that. We're going to play around with that kind of stuff. It's fun to turn knobs and listen to sound, but really... The emphasis has got to always be on hearing it. If you can hear it and you have taste, and generally everybody's got taste, right? So if you can hear it and you've got taste, what to do about it, that will come. You'll figure that out. I'm telling you, you don't really have to worry about that part so much. Even though that's where everybody puts their focus, eh, that's why you're here, right? We're talking. So here's the thing. I come into your studio. I don't like what I see because I don't like how your monitors are set up. I don't like where they are in the room. And I don't like where you are in relation to your monitors. My rule of thumb is if you can reach out and touch your monitors, even if you have to lean a little bit to do it, they're too close to you. I'm probably going to make the thumbnail of this video. Monitors are not headphones. Most of you out there have got your monitors set up like headphones. And don't get me wrong, I love listening to music in headphones. It's exciting, it's fun, it's really intimate, and there's this really strange non-imaging that happens in headphones because this ear never hears what's piping into this ear and vice versa. So you get this really dramatic, really wide sound field. And people tend to, in my experience in project studios and home studios, they tend to replicate that with their monitors. They're sitting really close, their monitors are really wide and really close to their head. So you get this really dramatic feeling listening to the music, but there are problems with that. And the biggest problem is that you can't actually hear the truth of your mix. And specifically, you can hear the truth of your transients because they haven't had time or physical space to converge in the room and then hit your eardrums. What they're doing is they're hitting your eardrums and then they're converging somewhere back there or they're converging out in the hallway. This is why when you step out of your room into the hallway, you tend to hear things. Or when you go to your car, you tend to hear things because in cars, transients just are everywhere. They're so big and so clear. And so you're just like, oh my God, why is my kick drum so overmixed? You can hear that in the car because you can hear the freaking transient in the car. So here's the good news. For no money and some fair amount of time and effort, we can work to get your monitors and yourself situated in your studio so that you can hear a lot more of the truth of your mix. Not all of it. That requires acoustic treatment, but monitor placement is free and makes dramatic differences. It's just huge. That's the good news. The bad news is that if you set up the room to maximize the acoustic accuracy of your monitors and your listening position, the room itself is going to be furnished in a way that's a lot less useful and more of a pain in your ass because you use a lot more of the space as space. If you take nothing away from this video, take this away. You think you're listening to your speakers, but you're not. You're listening to your room. Specifically, you're listening to the sound of your speakers in your room. And that means you're listening to the sound of your room. But there are some pretty standard formulaic ways to set monitors up that mathematically just minimize the falsehoods and the lies and the issues that small, non-acoustically treated rooms have. So here's a diagram. And if you do nothing else, get a measuring tape Spend a little bit of time and set your monitors up like this mathematically. You don't even have to think about this. Just do this. Forget for a minute the considerations of space. Forget where your synthesizer is going to go and where's my vocal mic going to go. Don't worry about that. Just try this out. And then listen to music that you're very familiar with, commercially produced mix and master music, 
and listen to your own mixes in this new mix position. And listen at all kinds of volumes. Listen, whisper quiet and listen blisteringly loud. And I think it's gonna open your eyes. A lot of interesting things happen when you set your space up like this. Really what this is more for me is, this is an attempt to get you out of the near, what's called the near field. Most of the speakers that most of us own are called near field monitors. And they're called that because back in the day, back in the 70s, all there was was gigantic speakers mounted in the walls of the control room. And then these shitty little oratones sitting somewhere on top of the console and nothing else. That's all engineers listened on. That changed in the 80s with NS10s when they started bringing these other speakers in, sitting them on top of the back of the mixing desk and then listening to those. And then it evolved from there, especially in smaller spaces, non-commercial studios and stuff like that. We need to have our speakers be smaller and closer. And there is truth to that. I think we've pendulum swung way too far in the opposite direction now. If you've watched the last episode that I did on geeking out on drum compression, it was probably really ear opening for you in terms of hearing transients, what they actually do. The thing is, transients need time and space to congeal in the room. This is what I'm talking about when I say you don't listen to your speakers, you're listening to the room. Kick drum, snare drum, front end of the vocal, plucking on the bass, all of this stuff it comes out of the speakers. It's got to come together. It's got to form this sort of cohesive pressure unit, and then it has to hit your ears. And if you've got your speakers like a foot from a wall, and then you're two feet from the wall with your speakers two or three feet on either side at sharp angles coming in like this, that sound doesn't even remotely have time to come together and congeal into meaningful transients or even a meaningful stereo image. You get no image when you're listening to music like that. But when you set your speakers up like the diagram that I showed you earlier, so many amazing things happen for the sound. So there's probably gonna be trade-offs for you. There's gonna be aspects that you're gonna miss. You're gonna miss that sort of adrenaline rush of the really wide dramatic sound field but instead what you're going to get is something a lot closer to the truth and you're going to get something a lot more like the pinpoint precision of a true stereo image where you can move things around three-dimensionally in space both in terms of the panorama and in terms of the treble and the bass and a lot more interesting things are probably going to happen for you in terms of being able to open up the spaces in your productions and place things with more precision and more deliberation about, I want this in front of that, and I want this off to the side of that. That all happens when you get out of the near field, when you set your monitors up in a room in a way that the sound actually has a fair shot of converging before hitting your ears, and you're in a position where you're not on top of the speakers, you get a little bit of breathing room, you get to take in the whole picture as accurately as possible. So again, I don't know you from Adam, and I don't know how your studio is actually set up, but I have a hunch it's not optimized because for whatever reason, this is just not sexy. Right? Compressors, EQs, plugins, synthesizers, sexy. Room acoustics, really nerdy stuff, but man, it's so worth your time. And it's funny because when I talk to people, most of the people that I correspond with, the vast majority of people I correspond with have taken absolutely no concerted effort to set their monitors up in their room. They set their speakers up in a way that was convenient for the way they wanted to furnish the room and for the functionality. And I get that. It's really important that your studio have a comfortable feel and support the kind of workflow and vibe that you like. But at the same time, it's a studio. You're working with sound. You need to hear this stuff. So if you do nothing else, try the setup in that diagram. Live with it for a week. Mix with it for a little bit. Just try it out. You don't have to commit to it permanently. You can always go back to what you had. You can start to hybridize because once you hear, oh, my speakers sound so different when I put them here. And then again, when I put myself over here, you get an ear for that. Once you can hear that, then you can get deliberate about it. You can be like, okay, well, what happens if I move this one speaker a foot to the left? <laughs> Sit back down, listen. Wow, okay. 80 hertz is faster and tighter, but the image got smeared in a weird way and everything is kind of lopsided to the left now. Okay, let me go move that way. I've spent a week or two weeks in a new room setting my monitors up to the point where I'm tweaking them inch by inch, just moving around. Man. Get a measuring tape out. Make sure your ears are equidistant to the tweeters and the tweeters are equidistant to each other. Like 
take the time to do this. So hopefully I'm earning your trust at this point in time. Trust me when I tell you this is so worth the time and effort. It can potentially be a huge game changer for you. It's free. It just costs a little bit of time. And also, I got to say, sitting back from the speakers, I'm like six, seven feet back from my speakers when I mix. I love being in the midfield. It's a more exciting way to mix. You can turn the music up louder and hear more accurately. And it doesn't hurt your ears because you got more distance between you and that loud ass speaker. So set your room up with respect and the care that it deserves. And the sound will pay you back tenfold. This has been Kush After Hours. Gregory Scott. Thanks for watching.